Welcome to CG Taurus. In this video, we're going to learn how to make this basketball in Blender 4.0, so let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to do is add a cube and apply the subdivision surface modifier, which is right here. Let's set it to 2 and apply it. Now, let's go to the top view, enter edit mode, and press the 3 key to switch to face mode. Now, let's activate X-ray mode and select these faces. Press the shift key to keep selecting more geometry. With this, we've selected one four of the sphere, but we also need to select this part here. So, let's go to one of the side views, activate X-ray mode again, and select those faces. It should be selected like this. And with the X key, we proceed to delete these faces. Once we have this, we'll go to one of the side views and make a cut across this segment. So with the K key, we activate the knife tool. You can also select it from this menu. Let's create a cut between these two vertices and another cut approximately here. And with the Enter key, we apply the cut. Okay, we do this to create the characteristic pattern that all basketballs have. Now, let's apply the mirror modifier to restore our sphere. In this case, since we only have 1 8th, we need to apply it to the Y, X, and Z axis. So we apply it to the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. And we would have our sphere again. It's crucial to enable clipping so that our mesh is connected. Let's apply the modifier, and as you can see, we have our sphere with its respective cuts. The mesh is not completely spherical, it's not a perfect sphere. So, we need to make it one. There are two ways to do this, but first, let's apply one more subdivision. I'll duplicate this sphere to show you both methods. Let's start with the simpler method. Select our mesh, go to edit mode, and with the A key, select the entire mesh. Now. Go to the Mesh menu, Transform, and to Sphere. Apparently, nothing happens, but if we move the cursor, the value in the top left corner increases. We need the value to be 1. So, move the mouse until the value is equal to 1. And as you can see, we have a perfect sphere. We can compare it with this one, and obviously, we see that this sphere is much squarer because we started with a cube. Our second method involves using a modifier called cast in this case. Here, as you can see when applied, it already gives us a more spherical shape. But to make it a perfect sphere, we need to raise the value here to 1. So, increase it to 1. And as you can see, we'll have practically the same result as with the first method. It's crucial to apply the modifier. You can use either of the two methods. Method 1 is a bit more practical and simpler, so we'll stick with that. But method 2 is equally effective. Let's delete this sphere. Now, let's proceed to mark the basketball pattern more effectively. But first, let's add the subdivision surface modifier again, but this time, we won't apply it.
Also, right-click and select Shade Auto Smooth to smooth our sphere. Now, let's proceed to create our ball pattern. We'll select with the 2 key, which is Edge Mode, all this geometry here. Remember that holding down the Option key, we can select the loop, and if we also press the Shift key, we can accumulate selections. Now we need to create a bevel. So, press Ctrl B, and we'll move our mouse to where we want our bevel. I'll leave the bevel about here. With the mouse wheel, we can add more cuts. In this case, we only want one cut in the middle, and we apply it. Okay, now, what we're going to do is select this middle cut. For this, we'll use the Select Less shortcut, which in my case, I have modified. But if you go to the Select menu, you can find the option with its original keyboard shortcut. Now, we're going to use the Option S command for scaling. It's crucial to have the proportional editing function activated. We activate it and use the Option S command to move the mesh inward. Remember that with the mouse wheel, we modify the proportional editing distance. In this case, the distance is almost the same size as the 3D cursor. Alright, to see the mesh more clearly, let's deactivate the edit mode view of the modifier, and now we're going to apply another bevel to that same selection. Press Ctrl-B and adjust the bevel. Now, let's select these edges, the edges we just created with the bevel. It's crucial to deselect these squares that are forming. Now, let's apply another bevel. Let's activate the modifier view in edit mode and create the bevel. In this case, it should be a very, very small bevel. If you see that it moves too much when you move the cursor, press the Shift key, and it will move more precisely. So, let's apply a super, super small bevel. And as you can see, we've created a pattern on our sphere. Here we can add one more subdivision level to make it look even better. Well, with this, we would have completed the modeling of the ball, and now we need to proceed to apply textures. So, in this case, we'll use only two textures, one for the pattern and another for the ball's color. Let's get to it. We'll go to edit mode, switch to face mode with the three key, and we'll first add the ball pattern. Now, let's go to the Materials section and add a new material. Let's change the name to something more appropriate and select a fairly dark color, almost absolute black. Finally, click on Assign, and we have assigned the selected part of the mesh to a specific material. Now, let's create a new material for the rest of the ball. I'll select an orange color. And now, let's invert the selection to assign this new material to the rest of the ball. Okay, to verify that we've done everything correctly, let's deselect the mesh. 
If we select either of the two materials and click on Select, the part of the mesh we assigned earlier should be selected. Now, I'll make a small correction here. As I also want to add this small part of the geometry. So, with the Select More shortcut, I'll add this part. You can check this shortcut here because, as you know, I have modified the shortcut. Once this part is selected, I'll click Assign again. And as you can see, that part of the mesh is assigned. At the moment, we don't see any material reflected, and that's because we need to change the view. So, let's go to the material view, and now we'll see our basketball with some materials. Let's correct one more thing. If you notice, there's a part of the geometry here that's very sunken. So, I'll select these faces here again. With proportional editing activated and using the option as shortcut, we'll pull this section outward. I'll reduce the proportional editing a bit and continue adjusting that area. And there you go, I like it better this way. With this, we'll have our basketball with basic texturing. Okay, now what we're going to do to finish texturing our basketball is to unfold the UVs of our mesh. For this, we'll change the view and make the selection of where our mesh will be cut. In this particular case, we'll use this outer edge that we had created before with the bevel. It's also important to select these edges so that the mesh unfolds correctly. With this, we'll have everything selected that we need. Now, right-click and choose Mark Seam. Our entire selection turned red, as you can see. Here we have a duplicated mesh, so what we're going to do is select the vertices of this square. Press the M key and choose Merge by Distance. As we can see, no vertices have merged, so let's increase this value here to make them join. This same process needs to be repeated for the other squares on the mesh. And finally, select these vertices. Now we can continue. Let's select our entire mesh. And go to UV, then select Unwrap. Now, we'll go to the UV editing menu, and as we can see, our mesh is unfolded. All right. Let's go to the Shading menu. The first thing we're going to add is the Voronoi node and connect it to the Color Ramp node. Let's invert the Color Ramp. Press Ctrl-Shift on this node to preview it. 
This keyboard shortcut is from an add-on called Node Wrangler that comes with Blender, so you can activate it from the add-ons menu. Okay, let's adjust the color ramp a bit. Now let's find a scale that works. With Ctrl T, we add these two nodes that allow us to control our texture better. We'll reduce the random value to 0.1 and connect the texture coordinate to mapping from UV to vector. Let's adjust the scale again to a value we like. Connect the principal BSDF, and for color, let's add another color ramp. Select a light purple here. and a darker purple here. You can copy the previous color and lower the brightness to make it darker. All right, now let's add a bump node and connect it from the color ramp to the height socket. Connect the bump to the normal. As we can see, we're starting to have some relief in our material. Let's lower the bump strength a bit, and we'll have the main material of our ball finished. Now, what we need to do is add the Lakers logo here to give the ball a better appearance. So, let's add an image texture, and add a new texture. You can find this texture in the description. You can use the texture of your choice. Just keep in mind two important points. First, the size of the image, which has to be square. It could be, for example, a texture of 1024 by 1024 pixels, or in this case, a texture of 2048 by 2048 pixels. And the second requirement for the texture is that it needs to be in black and white because we'll apply masks to make our material. Okay, so let's press Ctrl-T and go back to the UV editing menu. Select our texture, and to not alter the texture we made earlier, let's create a new UV map. Well, go to the Data menu with your object selected, and go to the UV map section and add a new one. You can name it whatever you want to differentiate it. and then select it. Now, let's position our mesh to match our image. I want to add the logos in these two sections here, so let's do it. First, let's check which sections these are in. In face mode and with the UV sync option active, we can select and check which are the two parts of the mesh we want to position. In this case, as we see, it's these two. So, with the L key and the mouse over the mesh, we'll select this island. And again with the L key, we select this other island. Since we don't need the rest of the mesh, let's invert the selection and move all this mesh outside of the texture. To better apply the texture, go to the shading menu to view the texture while adjusting it since, for the moment, it's not visible. Press Shift and Control again and click on the texture, and now we can visualize it. In this case, we'll have to change this node to the UV Map node, which allows us to select a specific UV map. 
and we select the map we created earlier. Back to the UV editing menu, and now we proceed to adjust our mesh. Select this island with the L key, and with the G key, we'll move it. Here we'll scale and rotate this part of the mesh to fit where we want. Now, let's adjust the bottom island. As we can see, the texture is overflowing on the sides. To fix this, Go to Shading into the texture to change this value to Extend. Okay, with this, our mask will be applied correctly. Now let's add a Mix Shader node and connect our texture to the factor of the Mix Shader. And now we'll connect our material to one of the sockets of the mix shader. This way, we have applied our mask. Now let's create the logo material. For this, select the first material we created and duplicate it with Shift D. And make some small changes. Let's select an orange tone here. Now connect this material to the available mix shader socket. Now we're seeing our two materials. I'll adjust the colors and the scale of the logo material a bit, but you can leave it as it is, depending on the aesthetic you want to give to the ball. I think I like it more this way. Now let's add one last detail. Let's make our logo have more relief. So what we'll do is duplicate our texture, put it down here. And add another bump node. Connect it like this. Check the Invert box. Now, add a Saturation node. This is done to try to hide these artifacts generated here. So, let's change this value to a lower one. Finally, connect this node to the bump node of the logo material. With this last detail done, we would have finished the texturing of our basketball. Now, let's quickly create a lighting setup to illuminate our scene. Remember that we're going to use the Cycles engine to render our image, so if you haven't selected it, do so. I'll add a scheme of two lights just to better visualize the ball.
You can copy this same configuration, but remember that the lighting in a render is crucial, so I recommend experimenting with the lights to get a better result. Now I'll add a camera and go to its view. To move in our scene with the active camera, go to the View menu and activate the Camera to View option. Finally, go to the Render section and go to the Color Management section to change the look of our scene to one with high contrast. This way, our render will have much more vibrant colors. Now, we just have to render our scene, and we'll be done. Well, I hope you liked and found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe for more content. And don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.